Hi everyone, welcome back to the final instalment of the detailed build videos for the Route 3 Lite CNC machine. In this episode we'll cover the wiring. Here is a um, ramps case I've designed uh, for specifically for this machine. Um, it's a slightly lower profile to fit underneath the gantry. Um, it's got two cooling fans and a little cable that plugs onto the auxiliary. So whenever there's power applied, these these cooling fans will be running uh, to keep in these uh, motor drivers cool. Uh, it takes four screw holes to screw them down. Normally, what I plan to do is just put this at the back. I'll show you the lid whilst I'm here. The lid has just got a little tongue and groove that clips in, and then uh, just uh, will be two extra screws down to hold it down. The ramps module will uh, screw onto its standing post within the within the case, so it should be very rigid when installed. This is where I'm planning on uh, mounting the case. Uh, just there, it's going to take four wood screws that just will go screw straight into the uh, wood. There's our ramps case installed with the lid, and you can see. why it's a fairly special case because the bottom of the gantry goes over the top of it. As well as that there's clear some extra holes for all the cables to run to go straight up into the machine so we should be fairly clean. There shouldn't be many cables running around. Should be good? All right. Put this to one side. I think next thing is we'll get the uh, y-axis drag chain on first. Now as you can see these come in metre lengths, so, so we don't need it all. We need to mount it here and then run our train down to the other end, like so. Alright, some of these clips, are, they are slightly different, so you've got to make sure you get the right one. So that this one's uh, rigid, pretty much, whereas uh, this one can be a bit more bendy, so make it play in your favour. It should be all alright. I will use some. Um, 12 minutes dead, I think, I hope. Yep, that's fine. Just two nuts holding this down. See, that's really quite nice. One thing that we need to do is install our connecting rod. Now, this will um, ensure that the gantry is linked together and moves with one another. So, as one side rotates, so will the other side move in the other side. So, it also allows you to fine tune the gantry if it is slightly skew. If this one looks like it might be slightly um, one way, but with this rod we'll be able to turn it out. Perfect. 
These are 8mm bore uh, 20 or 22 teeth pulleys. That will go on either side of this. Make sure they're even. So if your gantry is slightly wonky, you will use uh, loosen off these two grub screws and, and come to rotate uh, the uh, belt on them uh, pulleys and it will uh, give you some fine adjustment on it. So that's our connecting belt installed. That runs through the centre of the bottom box section. Um, yeah, I think should we do... Uh, put the uh, Z-axis on. These are just want wanty stepper motors. Um, I can put a uh, number in the bottom of which ones these are. Um, good motors these are. I've brought a couple of these from the, that company and uh, very happy with them. Yeah, you need the M3 by 12 screws. Now I'm going to have the cables exiting this side because I know my drag chain is going to be that side as well. So, uh, and then this is a belt that will go straight onto it. This is a 6mm wide 232 teeth belt. That should uh, go over there nicely. And if we pull the motor back. Very good, alright. I suppose now we should install the other drug chain. Then what we'll do is get the uh, y-axis motors installed and go from there. Two needle seventeens, and then the uh, needle seventeen motor mount. <coughs> Storm the motor mounts, make sure the uh, opening is towards the rear of the machine. This is so the cable, uh, the belt can go through. These bolts are 50mm long, M3 again. And if you were uh, installing the motor, make sure you put the, uh, the 16 teeth pulley on beforehand. You can do it when it's on there, but it's a little bit more fiddly. And do the same again for the other side. Installed as well. A ball nosed uh, Allen key does help for this, it's a bit tight. I suppose whilst we're on it, we might as well be installing our. Um, X axis belt. I 
first things first, we just put our blanking plate in. Um, this is just a plate to cover up the hole for the provision for the lead screw. And then next we'll take our um, our clamp that clamps the belt to the side of the gantry. Leave a little bit extra on the uh, outside so you can get tight, use it, get some, get pliers on it or something to tighten it up. And then put that in there. I'm going to try a 35mm uh, long M3 bolt on this. I'm not doing that tight just yet because I want to um, make sure it's level and, and it's entering the motor at the right height. Now what we're trying to do is make sure the uh, belt is running in line with the pulley at the back and it's not like going up on, the, on it on one edge. I f sometimes think that I can tighten the belt easier with using some pliers on the belt than moving the motor backwards. That's what I'm going to do here. And then when I tighten these bolts here, the plate will just push it and get the extra tension I require. Okay. And then just cut the excess belt off, leaving a little bit extra just just in case later you need to tighten it up. We might be able to see. And what mm. Whilst we're doing belts, we might as well do the uh, Y axis now. Um, pretty similar as before. Um, and I'll show you how I do this. Um, I think before we do that, we'll make sure at the moment this gantry isn't secure just yet. So I'm going to get my square and square that up. Looks good. I think now we'll do the uh, belts on the Y axis. These are the uh, belt clamps. Um, they just sit on top of there um, on the rear side. On both sides. And leave yourself a little bit extra because we'll be using the uh, tail to tighten up the uh, gantry. Uh, 20 mil long screws should do the job.
Now with this one, I'm going to line it up and then cut the end off. Because I know... So now what we're going to do is do the same on this side. Now, as we've joined this rod up together, it's difficult to uh, to tighten this one. So what we need to do is just loosen this. I think if you're going to do these, use 16mm, 16mm uh, M3. So normally what I do is uh, put the belt in and then use it as like a cantilever. Just take that yak with it. I'm going to use uh, just drill vernier to um, to align the gantry because at the moment it's uh, slightly uh, one-sided. It's not any, uh, not a problem. Um, I expect it to be not perfect. But what we can do with these two nuts loose, we can twist twist the gantry, and then once they once we tighten it up, it will stay there. So we can uh, make sure our machine's running nice and square. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this side of the vernier, and I'm going to butt up against the edge of the wood and then measure the distance from it. Um, this will only I'll have to check this once the machine's running. So what we need to do is lock the motors in place, but for now we can get a, a good enough figure against the end stop uh, against the plastic parts because we already know they're in the same distance, but normally you would have the machine powered on, have the motors engaged, they're not driving and then adjust it from there so at least you know they're not going to move. Um, Starting to look like a machine now. Um, just moving on. <laughs> They're quite um, talking motors, so that's why it's quite hard to move that one. <laughs> it's so small. That ah, looks good. Looks good. All right. I think next what we'll do is install our ramp controller. So to hold this down, um, the, there is four mounting points in the uh, in the case, but the ramp shield only allows for three. Um, when you tighten this down, don't go too mad. It's only to hold it in place. And you don't want the uh, head of the screw to take the uh, um, solder resist off and short out any tracks underneath. So um
Now these two uh, motor fans are wired in parallel and just going to a uh, small little header pin and on the ramp support there is a 12 volt outlet. So whenever this has got power, 12 volt power, the fan should be on. Uh, in the past I've had it uh, on a fan pin but it's a bit annoying <laughs> when you do a milling operation you forget to put the uh, cooling fans on and your machine starts skipping steps so um, having it um, permanently on isn't no harm I'd recommend it. Other than the lid there is nothing there's just no more plastic parts left. I think it's get the spindle mounted and then start wiring it up uh, and not forgetting the end stops. Now these end, end stops when they come it comes with a two um, two and a half mil hole and as we're using three mil holes um, uh, they won't go through so if you if you take note they, they can't go through but what you can do is drill these holes out to fit. Um, if you drill them carefully there is no problem I've done it on you can see them. You can see them here. I've drilled these out, right. and here, and I've got no issues with them. So, need to get a three mil drill bit for that. Now these should just take normal 10mm M3 nuts and they should just go in like so. I'm only going to lightly place these for now because we're going to be wiring them up shortly. Just got some extra bits so we can do some soldering. Now, for the spindle, I plan to take the cable, the cores out of this cable, and repurpose it for this. It should be long enough. I need some a bit of a cheap skate and can't be bothered to buy rid of cable. So I'm going to take the plug off. And end off. Just care carefully score along the cable, and uh, as long as you don't go through it, it should pull out fine. We're not going to need the earth on this. You might need to get pan head um, screws for this bit here because it will foul with motor. No issue, I need to get some heat shrink from them anyway. Right, all I'm going to do is start running uh, the longer cables first, such as the end stops, the lights, and then the two motors. So, in all, we need one, two, uh, three, four cables, four of these cables to go this way. Right, with this, I'm doing the end stop switch at the moment. With this, 
to make sure that the uh, cable runs, runs through the mesh. So as you can see, when it's against the uh, side of the carriage, there's not a lot of room for cable, so just poke it through the mesh. When you do this, make sure you put your heat shrink on first. Um, try not to forget. <laughs> I've done it many times. Now, for this, I'm going to be soldering to the normally open and the normally uh, and the common pin. Sorry. Now when you do this, try and keep your convention, uh, wiring convention the same. I'll show you what I've just done. Two switches for the Z min and max. I don't know if you can see what I've done, I've, I've just mounted the two um, end stops. One spindle installed. Oh, that's rock solid. Nice. Yeah, this lead screw isn't the best, um, but what it was was the nut was on there, yeah, slightly wonky, that's why it was a bit too stiff. It's better, we'll just have to see how it performs, it should be alright. Yeah. Right, 
Now we know where that's going to sit. Like so. Give that out. Now I'm going to pass the uh, spindle cables through. This one's probably the trickier side. Unfortunately, the uh, camera filled up, so uh, I had to stop and start again. But we were about to install the lights. So for this I'm just going to tie the two together, um, should do the job. Right, these are self adhesive LEDs but I'm going to probably put cable tie around it as well. Second fork, so I'll just leave it as it is. Just want to cable tie this up the back of it. I wonder if you can see that. Can you see uh, the LED strip on the uh, plastic mount? And then all I've done is got the cable. Cable okay, we'll tied it to the back of it, and then I'll run that back up. Like so. It goes without saying, just make sure you get your uh, views and what I've, like, what I've done, point two pairs together, make sure you get the right colours together. You're not really supposed to uh, solder things that are going to go into a terminal block, but um, I just wanted to keep the two bunches together. So I'm just going to put this in one of the... Uh, MOSFET drivers on the board. We'll see which one it is.
Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do the end stops first.
we are very much nearly there. So all of these just need to get terminated in this box, shouldn't be an issue. And uh, I'll show you what, what's gone on this side. So once they're all uh, tucked up and terminated in there properly, I've still got the end switch and the probe and end switch this side to do. Um, I'll do the end switch now, but I won't do the probe just yet. I'll wire it in. steps I've got so as you can see all the cables nice nicely done um, I want to put the uh, probe mount on shortly I need to print the bracket that's why I'm got it um, and then all of these will be crimped inside the box hopefully as neat as I can get it to maximize airflow but uh, It'll go something like that, I think. Yeah, there's not a lot of room in that box. Hopefully, uh, heat isn't an issue, but... Once all these cables got the ass sleeves on, it'll, oh, it'll be alright, I think. Right. <clears throat> right, finish off the wiring and hopefully try and get her moving. For this, I'm going to be using some crimp connectors um, with the crimp tool. Uh, easily done, uh, quick and simple, and tool's fairly cheap anyway. So. Uh, Perfect. 
Perfect, right. And then for the end stops, I'm going to be using these um, housing forms, just a two by one. Nothing too fancy. Make sure when you're wiring this up that you've got the right, because uh, this is the uh, end stop I'm currently doing for the uh, Z axis. Just make sure you've got the colours the right way around because uh, uh, they won't work otherwise. Now I'm just going to write on, on the uh, housings what, what axis it relates to, because um, I know from originally I wrote EZ for N stop Z, so I'm just going to put E on these as well, uh, S, Z on these as well.
So that's it for this build series. Uh, please like, comment and subscribe. And if you fancy building your own CNC machine, please see the uh, links down in the video description below for where you can download the files and build your own. Please consider joining us on our Facebook community or check out the website where you can browse recent build photos, keep up to date with news and join our forum community over there too. I appreciate this was a long video but thanks for sticking out and stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye!